So we'll do a little bit of practice, review, whatever you want to do before we take the ASU test and then we'll get to what we're going to do for the next few weeks. Uh, won't quite take two weeks to get through it, but uh, we'll have plenty of time to spend on it. <clears throat> and that's going to be 113 to 145, starts on page 1337, all about steering and suspension. Includes uh, alignment as well at the very end. Are we doing the uh, ASC first or today? Yeah. Driving again? Into this week. No. <laughs> this week? Into this week. Hopefully. Apparently, the, uh, the machine shop they extended it to was backed up. So they didn't get a chance to send the engine until today. Really? Thing that the, that the shop can't do because they don't have the actual machine shop equipment to do that kind of stuff. Thank <laughs> you. 
Probably too hard to read, isn't it? I've never used this site before. You know, oh yeah, that is. Anybody see that? No. This is while discussing removal and replacement of the French wisdom of the technician, they said that there are threat adjusters in the French okay to adjust. Oh, well, somebody can read it back there. says that engine removal is always required when removing the transaxle. Is that mm, true? No. No. <laughs> Could there be threaded adjusters on the differential case to adjust bearing preload? Yes. Yeah. I suppose there could be, huh? Do you want to go with A? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't know how this works and it doesn't you tell you until the end. So it says something at the top. What's that? You answered the question incorrectly. Oh, incorrectly. Let's look. So, so question details. How do we do that? Number one. Neither. That doesn't tell you why, huh? No. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Can you make um, it a little bigger? While discussing installation of transmission, technician A says that bent clutch disc will cause misalignment problems. B says that bent input shaft will cause misalignment problems. Bent clutch, clutch disc. Bent input shaft will cause both. What, what is both? Just bent in general is. Problem. Basically, if anything's bent, it's going to cause misalignment problems, yeah. I'm guessing, right? So we do both of those. Submit uh, the big red button. Oh, yeah. Correct, I think. Yeah. It oh, says there correct. We go. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of familiar with this. I've used it before, I just happened to see it. <coughs> While discussing synchronizer hub sleeve, hub sleeves, keys, springs, and blocking rings. Technician A says that the blocking ring dog teeth tips should be pointed with smooth surfaces. B says that the synchronizer sleeve must slide free freely on the synchronizer hub. I don't know anything about dog teeth. <laughs> we talked about this before in another question. Remember I said they're supposed to be pointed and one said they're supposed to be rounded? Mm. So are dog's teeth rounded? Or they sharp? I think they would be pointed, yeah. yeah. The blocking ring, blocking ring dog teeth tips. Well, you, you say that the dog teeth should be pointed, but it says they have smooth surface surfaces. They can still be point. They can still be pointed with smooth surfaces. No. Synchronizer sleeve must slide freely on the synchronizer hub. Freely, what does it mean by freely? It means without binding, just, you know, nice and smooth. Mm, yeah, both. Correct? Correct. 
While discussing bearing preload, technician A says that a worn speedometer drive and driven gears may cause erratic speedometer operation. B says that this problem will result in premature extension housing bushing failure. May cause erratic speedometer operation. Check A is kind of a common sense thing, right? If you have worn gears, is it going to cause the speedometer to be erratic? Probably. Uh, yeah. Because that's your gears that tell it how fast it's going, right? So A makes sense. Premature extension housing bushing failure. Remember when we talked about extension housing bushing? That's the one if you have a binding U joint or something like that, it would cause to wear on one side. It's that, it's that bushing that goes into the back of the extension housing and back of the transmission where the drive shaft goes in. Yep. Would that have anything to do with that? Premature extension housing failure? I mean, cause problems. Yeah, both. <clears throat> both? A? What do you guys think? Me. I mean, C. You would go with C? Wait, is that the, uh, that's the thing you kept would, saying? Would your speedometer, would a worn speedometer drive and driven gear cause problems with the extension housing bushing? Yeah. Yeah? Wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Just A? Is that right? Yeah, wouldn't have anything to do with it. <clears throat> the statement, if the drive shaft is installed in the original position, you may experience a drive line vi vibration. True or false? It's false. If it's installed in the original position, it's probably going to be okay. It's a what do you think? Yeah. yeah. The statement, the hydraulic system for a hydraulic clutch is totally separate from the brake system. The hydraulic system for a hydraulic clutch. Is the hydraulic clutch system totally separate from your brakes? No, not entirely. They share the same hydraulic system? No, I don't think so. No. They use they both use the same brake fluid, but that's about it, right? Mm. Yeah. Is it totally separate from the brakes? Yeah. It sure is. <coughs> okay. While discussing discussing crankshaft and plate, technician A says that thrust bearing is placed between the crankshaft main bearing cap and the side of the crankshaft journal. B says that thrust bearing are put into place to control only forward movement on the crankshaft. Should control forward and back movement? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Only forward movement. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's A. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. With a. Yeah. Go on with A. Let's see if we're right. I mean, let's see if he's right. Correct. Correct. <coughs> forward and back movement. Which of the following is a shaft to which wheels are connected? Axis, axial, or axle? Is is the last one. Is that only three options? Only three options. All right, Axel. Of course, it's the Axel. Okay. True or false? Most vehicles' speed sensor VSS are rotary magnetic switches or optical sensors. Most vehicle speed sensors. Vehicle speed sensors, rotary magnetic switches, or optical sensors. I don't know what optical is. I mean, yeah, well, we haven't got into that yet. It'd be like a whole effect sensor or uh, a magnetic uh, sensor. Like your. Uh, so it's in this chapter that we're about to do. Or mm -hmm. no. Rotary magnetic switches. Well, it's saying that it's both of those, and it's true or false. Most of them are either this or this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Think that's true? 
No. no. Your answer is incorrect. Let's see, where's our, um, oh, there we go. It's false. Where's the one that says false? It doesn't tell you. No, it doesn't say why. Uh, okay. <coughs> True or false? Yeah. Many late model manual transmissions and transaxles use automatic transmission fluid as lubricant for reduced friction and improved vehicle fuel economy. True. They use mostly anything. Do most late model manual transmissions use automatic transmission fluid? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, late models like today, today modern? Late model, I mean, probably in the last, I don't know, five, ten years, probably what they're talking about. Automation. Wait, no. <laughs> what? ATF. Automation. Yes, true, right? I, I think. I don't There's no manual change. What do you think? Oh, no. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany. An <laughs> input. Are you tired? A lot of, remember when we went through the fluids? It could either use a, uh, a heavy gear lube, or it could use engine oil, or it could use automatic transmission fluid. Automatic transmission fluid is actually a common fluid for newer, newer car or manual transmission. OK. <laughs> While discussing transaxle gasket sealants, seal, and fasteners, A says that a plug transaxle vent might cause excessive transaxle pressure. B says that it might cause repeated drive axle seal failure. Is it both? Both. Okay. You could kind of read this as a common sense question, right? Yes. If a vent was plugged, would it cause excessive pressure? Yes. Yeah, obviously, it can't vent, right? If it can't vent, is it going to cause a seal failure? That pressure's going to go somewhere, right? Yeah. Probably going to cause a seal failure, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that is correct. Right. Which of the following is a rubber protective cover used to contain lubricants and keep out dirt and water? Boot. Bell housing, bellows, boot, bushing. Boot. Rubber protective cover. The boot goes around the CV axle. Boot? Yeah. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Could it be more than just a boot? Bushing is one. The bellows, C &D? I'm not sure about bellows. I know for a fact boots on them. Why don't you spell it boot? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, it's not that it? one. Can we see the question details? They don't tell you why. So B and C. So yeah, I wasn't sure about bellows, yeah. but I know for a fact Where are bellows. bellows on? It's kind of like a boot. It's just kind of another name for it that you oh, use okay. on some things. Well, while discussing transmission sensors and switches, a says that the backup lamp is normally located in the transmission on a manual trans wait transmission on a manual transmission equipped vehicle. B says that the backup lamp's lights when the vehicle is shifted into reverse. Backup lamp's lights when the vehicle is that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh what would be B? <coughs> What's that? What would be B? Why would the backup lamp be in the transmission? Yeah, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, so it's B. Because um, if, unless they just worded it wrong, if they, unless they meant if the backup lamp switch yeah. is normally, then it would be correct. Yeah. But the backup lamp isn't in the transmission. It's on the back of the tail light, right? Yeah. So unless they just worded that wrong, uh, this, this should be wrong. So B. Well, it's so look, it, the very first um, sentence while discussing transmission sensors yeah. and switches. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. So then both. Might, might be both then. Yeah. Okay, good. Good thing you noticed. Yep. That. Yep. 
I was looking at that too, but I was looking are. for a specific. If you were talking about the switch, it would be. Yeah. But I, 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 didn't, I didn't read the first part, so yeah, good things. thing you did. While discussing bearing transaxle components, A says that extreme effort to rotate the input shaft through forward gears in reverse might indicate an end plate problem. B says that it might indicate bed shaft. Extreme effort to rotate the input shaft through forward gears in reverse. Yeah. A is right. It might indicate bed shaft. It could be both. Bearing trans. It doesn't end play problem. It could be too much end play. Too little. Bed shaft. Do you have to put in that much effort? B is right because if it's bent, it's going to take a lot to push in. So I, I want to say both. It's not both, it's B. But I'm so if you were rotating an input shaft on transmission, if it was bent, would it cause it to be hard to rotate? It's definitely. Absolutely, yes. right? What if it just had too much end play, like this switch? Yeah, it could. Would that cause it? No, I think that'd make it looser, wouldn't it? Like easier? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Too much end play would be a problem. Too much end play. Would be a problem. Too much end play. End play. It was end, end play problem in general. Yeah. It doesn't say too much. Too so much. it doesn't specify, it's just it's problem. Just a problem. So yeah, both. 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 Oh, what? So then it's D. It's B. Can we see show details or? Yeah, can we click the app? Yeah. Should we see that? No, did it show? Oh, what? What? Neither. Neither? Wait, it's not even saying. Wait. It just says that it's wrong. But it's, yeah. What do you think the answer would be then? I know for a fact it's B. Mm. Did it stop telling us what the answer is? No. Let's just bring it back up. Hmm. Okay. Did you say it's both? Well, it could be. If the end play was too tight, it would be difficult to rotate. Yeah. But if it was too loose, it doesn't just say end play problem. If it was too loose, it wouldn't make any difference. It wouldn't cause it to be hard to rotate. <coughs> the reverse idler gear <coughs> should be inspected for what type of teeth? All Pitted, of cracked, nicked, or broken teeth, or all of them? All of them. That makes sense, doesn't it? Why would you not check it for all of that, right? Okay. The length of the bar or drill bit that is installed and the lever to hold the transaxle neutral while the cables or linkage are adjusted. Well, they're not going to know this. No, I want to say 116. I guess 116. You know 116? Yeah. Let's see. No. What would it be? Did it tell us? Go down. It, it no. was on there. Click it, click it and then go it, down. Click the show details. Show details again. And then go down. down. Quarter. Quarter inch, okay. What are the following means to repair damaged threads? Chase. Mm. Yeah, right. B. So the following connects the transmission to the uh, uh, to the engine bell housing. Are there more at the bottom? No. Both B and C, both C and D. Isn't it bell housing? This the following connects the transmission and the engine <coughs> bell. The bell yes. housing is that big tub at the very mm -hmm. front of there. Yeah, okay. While discussing transmission, technician A says that the engine support fixture must be installed after the transmission to engine bolts are even loosened. Technician B says that a clutch disc alignment tool must be used before the transmission is installed to align the clutch disc with the flywheel. Who is right? A yeah, sounds weird. Why would you do that? Engine support fixture must be installed after so Sometimes you have to install an engine support fixture in order to pull a transmission out of transaction. So both. Should you install a fixture before you loosen the bolts? Before, right? <coughs> Let's see. Probably be a good idea, right? Yeah, so why after? <laughs> Clutch alignment tool, is that required before transmission can be installed into the the line of clutch disc with the firewall? We talked about that, Larry. You see the little alignment tool on the table? 
A says, yeah, I mean, A says after. Install after. You should install it before. After. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Hmm. There, you go, there you go with one word. <laughs> Which of the following is another name for clamp bolt? Scroll down a little bit. More? No, it's just, it's wait. It's empty. Oh, I guess. Wasn't it? Can you maybe uh, click on that X. Here? Yeah. No, there's nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just three. Eight. What's the following is another name for a clamp bolt? I don't even know the answer to this. Is it so maybe it's a pinch. I mean, clamp, clamp so maybe it's pinch? <laughs> yeah, probably, it makes probably sense. Probably pinch bolt, that would guess. Yeah. Ooh. What will use a growling noise? What will cause a growling noise in all gears? Keep her Growling noise and all Growling gears. noise in all gears. All gears. Main shaft bearing? Yeah. Main shaft bearing? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Which condition causes the release of the clutch? Condition of less free play, worn facings, scored pressure plate, none of the above. Which condition causes? The release of the clutch. Sounds weird. Would it be none? What does scored mean? Scored pressure. It's like scratched up. And scratch wouldn't be much, right? I mean, it would. Uh, it's kind of a weird question. Uh, yeah. What yeah. causes the release of the clutch? Talking about like normal operation. Putting your gas on the pedal. <laughs> I'd say no. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't really know what they're yeah, getting at Let's here. go with none of the above. The none. Let's put none. It's a trick. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're getting at. You want to put that one? Yeah. Yeah. None of the above. Ooh, right. still got it right. <laughs> Maybe that's why I couldn't figure out what you are talking about. That would make sense. Well, discussing assembly noise and vibration problems. Technician A says that improper preload on differential components may cause differential chatter. Mm. Technician B says that damaged ring gear teeth may cause differential chatter. Who was right? Teeth. Technician B is for sure. Preload, preload, preload on differential components. I say, uh, I don't think preload has anything to do with that. Well, That's the preload on the tapered uh, bearing. Mm -hmm. uh, Typically, when you talk about differential chatter, it's a limited slip and it's a yeah, clutch. It'd be, the issue. bearing would need to be damaged. The wrong lubricant yeah. or the wrong additive. We're not using the proper additive to it a lot of times. I want to say B. Just B? Yeah, uh, the, the bearing would have to be damaged. I don't think the preload is going to have much of a difference on that to make that noise. Don't just go with what I say, <laughs> but I say. <laughs> You want both? Yeah. Man. What is it? Is it B? Hey, what? what? Go up. It's the preload and... So the damage ring gear teeth wouldn't cause that sound. I mean, I, mean, I guess it'd be more of a grinding noise. And the bearings do growl, so I don't know. The speedometer gear... Oh, this... Wow. The speedometer driven gear is located only on the vehicle sensor, <coughs> only in the rear extension housing, on the main shaft, both on the vehicle sensor and in the extension housing. Speedometer driven gear. Speed yeah, the driven gear is the one that's being turned, right, by the drive gear. Drive gear is on the uh, output shaft. Mm -hmm. So the speedometer driven gear is located where? Would it be uh, B? The main oh, shot? The main shot? No. 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 Rear. rear is what's throwing me off. So 
somebody this one. These questions are not fully questioned. Yeah, I don't like some of these questions. I want to say, I want to say B, or both. Can it be in both places at the same time, or just one? I would. I mean, they. I know the. If it's talking about the sensors to check for the speed, those are on the, uh, the like right behind the um, calipers and the. Uh, what's it called? The, the I'm calipers the drums. Speed sensor. The, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is for the speedometer. For the speedometer. Mm -hmm. That's so. going to be on the output shaft of the transmission. It's going to have a drive gear there. The driven gear is going to be. Most likely on the sensor. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. The driven gear is what's so it's on the me too. Sensor? Let's see. I don't know. I think it's real cool. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it says. Yeah, I was going to say oh, that. Oh, oh, yeah. Too bad. <clears throat> Which of the following can cause a clutch to chatter? All of the above. Burn lighting on the disc. Bent clutch disc. Personal screens, all of the above. Well, um, all. All? All of them. 17 out of 25. 17 out of 25. Is that a pass? Hmm. Are we going to do more than this one? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do whatever you want. We did this one already, right? Maybe, yes. No. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Let's do it again. Which of the following are three critical clutch pedal measurements? Pedal height, apply pressure, free play. Pedal free play, reserve, and operating range. Pedal height, free play, and reserve. Pedal reserve, height, and kickback pressure. Is that A? Mm -hmm. uh, C? C? Yeah. Charles says it's C. Do you just like click oh, on it? Oh, you know what? Let's do the view answers as you go. And he is correct. Clutch slippage may be caused by which of the following? Worn or rough clutch release bearing, excessive input shaft and play, leaking rear main seal, weak or broken torsional spring? <coughs> okay, you got a clutch and slipping. We'll go with A. Worn or <coughs> rough clutch release bearing. Would that cause a clutch to slip? No. No. Input shaft in play. Would that cause a clutch to slip? No. You're leaking rear main shield. Yeah, I think I Leaking rear main shield might get oil and the clutch cause you to slip, right? Let's see. Mm. All right. Which of the following must be replaced during the service of a hydraulically controlled mm -hmm. clutch? Must be replaced during the service. Uh, fluid? Clutch fluid, yeah. Probably a good idea to change the fluid, right? Okay. A vehicle comes in with hard shifting concerns, particularly into first gear. Technician A says the first speed, first speed blocking ring is the most likely cause. Technician B says the clutch could be out of adjustment. Who was right? Bo? Well, they say most likely. Yeah. It's the most likely. I want to say B. Because they're, oh, I, actually, I kind of want to say Bo. neither because they're not really no. checking. They're just saying. You know what I'm saying? Articulating the first gear. Blocking is the most likely cause. First street blocking ring is the most likely cause of the clutch to be out of the chest. This scale will not cause it. Yeah, and we have both. No, I'm sleeping. Both could be right, but. What are they thinking? What are we thinking? I don't know. Would the clutch being out of adjustment cause it to be yeah. difficult to shift? Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, yeah. for sure. So you know B is right. Yeah. So C. All you gotta do is figure out if A is. I don't think A is right. You don't think A is right? Mm -hmm. You wanna go with just B? Yeah. There you go. If a transmission can be shifted into two gears at the same time, which of the following is most likely to cause? 
Two views at the same time. Faulty interlock. Yeah, faulty. Faulty interlock? Yeah. Yep. What would be the most likely customer complaint for a damaged transmission case? Center adapter plate or rear extension housing mating surface? Damage transmission case. Assembly operation is being performed in this photo below. Removing the snap ring. Is it? Oh, they're all snap ring. <laughs> <laughs> Retaining the input shaft bearing. I think that's what that is. Removing the snap. Output shaft. Boom snap bearing. Retaining the cluster gear. Retaining the snap bearing. C no. Uh, I want to be putting that's... it in and taking it out. <clears throat> Is that a picture of the front or the rear of the transmission? That's the front or the rear. The back, the front is the Yeah, front wait, the but the, the rears are, are a lot thinner than that. Is the front way? That could just be without the bell housing. Yeah, yeah. The bell housing isn't on it. Yeah, that's, the, that's the front without the, front the bell the housing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I so you already know that it can't have anything to do with output. Hey. Yeah, it's <clears throat> And you know those are snap ring pliers he's got in his hand. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the, the front input ring. shaft bearing, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, I see this. I don't see the snap ring, but I see the tool. <laughs> yeah. The manual transmission fluid is being checked during routine maintenance. Technician A says gold colored particles in the fluid can be can be from worn blocking rings. Technician B says aluminum colored shavings. Can be from the gear where who is right both. both. I mean he's right, yeah. Yeah, both. Right. What is being checked in the illustration below? Differential side bearing preload, input and out shaft, oh, input and output shaft bearing preload. Nominal play from input shaft. Differential side bearing play. Is that deep? Okay, that is a transaxle, right? Yeah. And where he's got that is where the drive axles go, so that is the differential okay. part of it, right? So then, D. Okay, what's D? Yeah. Okay. Wait, what is it? Is that a preload? Yeah. Because that's a preload. Oh, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a dial indicator. Right. <laughs> that's a weird looking torque wrench. <laughs> this question has the word except. For this question, look for the choice that could not cause the described situation. Read the entire question carefully before choosing your answer. Oh my God. All of these components can be removed from a transmission slash transactional before removing it from the vehicle, except front bearing retainer, reverse backup light connector, vehicle speed sensor, axle drive shaft. Sensor. Which one of these could you not remove without pulling the transmission or transaxle out of the vehicle? Could you could so not. Can be removed from a transmission. Can be removed. Could you pull the speed sensor out of it without removing the transmission? No. You have to. You have to take out the transmission and take it. Isn't that inside the transmission? Easily, you can change the speed sensor without doing anything. <coughs> Could you check, could you replace the reverse backup light connector? Of course you could. Could you get the axles out of it? Of course you could. Front bearing retainer, you would definitely have to pull it out to do that. Okay. You can't get to it, you gotta pull it out, right? <clears throat> a transaxle jumps out of it. Wait, oh. uh, tech, uh, technician A says snap rings are used as a selective fit on some main shafts, technician B says snap rings have a right side. What should always, oh my, I can't read. Always face should up. Always face up snap, snap ring pliers. Is there a right way up for a snap ring? There is. So there'd be. 
Are they used on some for selective spit on makeup? Yeah. Oh. Yeah? Right. The transaxle jumps out of gear under load, of which of the following is most likely caused. Worn or broken synchronizers, clutch not adjusted correctly, shift linkage is maladjusted, worn or loose, transmission cover springs are weak. Under load. Jumps out of gear under load. <coughs> Synchronizer would be for shifting, right? Clutch adjustment have nothing to do with it. Cover springs? Yeah. Shift linkage, right? <coughs> yep. A says, U joints must be in phase to prevent vibration. B says, when reassembling a drive shaft, the U joints do not have to be in alignment for proper operation, provided they are greased with the proper lubrication. Must be in phase to prevent. I guess A is right and B is right. Well, they do not have to be in alignment. Yeah, they have to be in alignment. A. A says a vibration at high speed can be caused by an incorrect rear U-joint operating angle. B says a squeaking noise in reverse is caused by a worn cross shaft bearing surface. O. O. A says the drive shaft on forward drive vehicles are usually removed with a pry bar or special puller. Is that how you get the axles out of a front wheel drive transaxle? Yeah. With a pry bar or a special puller? Uh -huh. yeah. Yep. So he's right. B says the axle nuts on a forward wheel drive vehicle are not reusable. Front wheel drive. Oh yeah, front wheel drive. <laughs> yeah, not reusable. Are the axle nuts reusable? No. No, they're not. So, they're both right? Two, one? No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Two technicians are discussing axle drive shaft removal on a vehicle with a transaxle. A says that when removing the axle drive shafts, match, match marks should be made to prevent a vibration after reassembly, probably. B says the front wheel bearing could be damaged if the vehicle is moved while the drive shafts are removed. Could be damaged. Vehicles moved while the drive shafts are removed. B, yeah. Removing the axle drive shafts match marks should be made to prevent a vibration after some. You want to match them, right? Match marks? You want to put them back with a. Yeah, anytime it says something like that, you know that's right. So both? We basically want you to put it back together the same way it came apart. So A is kind of a common sense thing that could be correct. We just don't know about this one, right? Front wheel bearings should be damaged. If vehicles move while the drive acts, drive shaft is already moved. Charles says it's right. Charles says it's both of you. Charles, come on. <laughs> so only B. Yeah, I don't know. That would be like if it was moving in neutral. Okay. A growling sound is heard from a rear or a rear rear wheel drive vehicle during cornering only. A says incorrect drive pinion bearing preload could be the cause. B says defective rear axle bearings may be the cause. Both. Rear wheel drive vehicle. It's a rear wheel drive vehicle. Yeah. When does it make the noise? When you're talking. Cornering. Cornering only. Uh huh. Okay, so what is it? Would it be? Would the drive bearing, would the drive pinion bearing preload <coughs> cause a noise on cornering only? Cornering only. The cornering only is always going to be an axle bearing. 
Okay. <clears throat> Try pinion bearing and make the noise all the <clears throat> time. Okay. Total. Is that the backlash? What That's rear backlash. axle measurement is being performed in the photo? The dial indicator, where is it? On the right here tooth, right? Yeah. Backlash, right? What does it call when it's on the back? On here? When you put it on the back. <clears throat> on here? Yeah. Right out? Yeah. Okay. What rear axle measurement is being performed in the photo? Is it right here right now? This is an easy question. What are they doing Steve. here? It's got marking compound on the gear, right? Yeah. Gear run out. Your gear tooth pattern. Oh, so no, that's not good. There's no easy data. Check it in. Right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Anytime you see marking compound on it, that yellow stuff, it's. They would have, they the would have had a tool pattern. on the back, then they would have been <sighs> out. The ring gear to pinion backlash is less than specifications, too low. <laughs> This will cause the ring gear tooth pattern to show contact in which the following areas. What? A? Good. 21. The owner of an older four wheel drive truck that uses card and new joints to drive the front. Wheels complains that whenever turning sharply and accelerating rapidly, a severe vibration is created. A says the re rear drive shaft may be out of balance. B says this is a normal co condition for carton new joints used on early four wheel drive vehicles. Okay. Older four wheel drive vehicle uses the old style carton new joints. Whenever turning sharply, accelerating, it vibrates. A rear drive shaft out of balance, what would that have to do with cornering or turning sharply and rapidly? So absolutely nothing, right? That is normal for those vehicles. Older. Two technicians are discussing the front axle neutral position on a four-wheel drive pickup truck. A says the front axles are di disconnected if the vehicle is being towed. B says the neutral position is also used on an all-wheel drive vehicle. No, the all-wheel has to be on, like on a bed. The front axles are disconnected if... Yes. Both? Both? Wait, like, what did I say about this B? I didn't say on the four wheel drive can be like flatbed so. A flatbed is for all wheel because you can't disconnect the back ones. Uh, oh yeah. <clears throat> a? Yeah, A. Right. A transfer case is extremely noisy in all selections except neutral whenever the vehicle is moving. A says the drive chain may be worn and loose, causing the noise as it hits the inside of the case. B says a transfer case bearing could be defective. Could be both. Except neutral. Drive chain. A transfer case will not shift from the low gear ratio up to direct drive or one to one ratio. Which of the following is the most likely cause? Broken shift, shaft spring, faulty shift indicator, damaged planetary gear set, or broken shift shaft? Could it be C? Transfer case will not shift from the low gear ratio up to direct drive. So it's stuck in low. or low. You got 24 out of 24, 100%. How good are you, right?
Synchronized transmission has a clunking or knocking noise in the first and reverse only. Technician A says that a broken tooth on the clutch in input gear <coughs> could be caused. Technician B says that a broken tooth on the counter cluster gear could be the cause. First and reverse only. Broken tooth would do something. Fully synchronized, wanting noise in first and reverse only. Is it Can you go up? In the input or the cluster? Input. Pretty sure it is right as close as the first gear. It's the input, yeah. And broken tooth in the counter cluster gear. Wouldn't the counter be reverse? <coughs> Let's go with both. Both? Oh. Manual transaxle makes a clunking noise on the acceleration and on deceleration. A says that a loose differential case pinion shaft could be the cause. B says that worn CB joints could be the cause. Acceleration and deceleration. Differential case pinion shaft could be the cause. The C B joints would um they're like it's a clunking noise. No. It's A. Clunking noise on acceleration and deceleration. These differential case pinion shaft C B joint. A C B joint would make a clicking noise on turns. The outer one. Yeah. I mean, the inner one could cause a clunk. Can it be both? I don't know. What do you want? Well, you don't see. They probably didn't. You just do both. Like in both? Yeah. Let's see what we got. Okay, what's going on here? Pinion yoke. Each pound. Torque wrench. Okay, this is an inch pound torque wrench. This is a differential, right? This is the uh, pinion that goes through here. This is where the drive shaft bolts up. Remember, inch pound torque wrench is not tightening this nut. What is he doing? Well, it's number five go with it. That, oh. What's that? All that goes with that picture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
A says that the setup shown can be used to check pinion to ring gear preload. B says that the setup shown can be used to check pinion flang nut torque. It's B. Like something about a nut torque. Yeah, it says torque. So. It's a torque wrench doing some torque stuff. Which you can also use a torque wrench for preload, right? Okay, pounds. here's what you got to remember. This is an inch yeah. pound torque wrench. You use foot there pounds. is no way you can check the torque on that nut with an inch pound torque wrench. It's got to be bearing preload. Okay. okay. So I had backwards. Okay. okay. That's, that's small. Uh, I don't have any idea to see what's going on there. What's in, what's in these detectors you're measuring in this illustration? I can't even tell what's going on. You see two hands. Pinion depth. Two hands. He's got two hands and he's holding something. He's oh, it's a gear like you know. I can't. I can't make out what's going on there. Can you zoom in? Just control and scroll. Hold control and scroll. Something doing something on the front of them on the teeth. He's like messing with the middle, right? That's like in the gear. The t toe? Heel's the top, so that's the toe area. Bring your run out. That's our choices. Bearing preload, pinion depth. I don't think it's preload. You can't, can't be run out or preload, can it? I think because it's there's no, uh, pinion depth. There's no dial indicator. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. And next one, what was it again? Bring your run out, run out, no. Side gear clearance, no. It, it can't be this one and it can't be this one because there's no, there's no, uh, And you tool. would need a feeler gauge for the torque uh, clearance, right? right? Maybe, oh, he's mess, not messing with the depths? Of, like, That's what I was saying, pinion depth, because wouldn't you need a feeler gauge for the, uh, uh, what's it called, the clearance? I think it's pinion depth. Let's go with that. Think so? Yeah, what number is this? Just so we can come back and remember. Six. six. Oh, we come back to six. Oh, that's so big. <laughs> a four-wheel drive vehicle vibrates while the tran while the front transaxle is engaged. I can shrink it a little bit. Okay. A four-wheel drive vehicle vibrates while the front transaxle is engaged. <clears throat> a says that a failed front axle shaft CV joint could be the cause. B says that different front and rear tire diameters could be the cause. Tire sizes would matter. Four-wheel drive vehicle vibrates while the front axle is engaged, which means it doesn't do it in two-wheel drive, but it does it in four-wheel drive. Both. Axel could, yeah. And this actually brought up a second question for me. Well, I think I know the answer, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, so, on on those cars that are like built for drag racing and everything, you know, on the rear wheel, they have the real thick, uh, slick tire that's mm -hmm. really large, mm -hmm. and then they have the the skinnies on front mm -hmm. that are really small. Mm -hmm. uh, how does like like that match up, or is it just because because of how thick it is and how much traction it's getting, it's kind of lifted most of the time? They're how, does, how does it match up? It doesn't have to. Does it have to? So the small one wouldn't rotate more than the front, or the the, the front tires wouldn't rotate more than the. They're rear completely tires? independent of each other, so it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Yeah. There's no connection between the front and rear. <clears throat> Okay. The front, the front wheels are just on a bearing. So that would only they matter. Could, they could be stopped all the way down the track, or they could be spinning. It doesn't make any difference. So that would only matter if it was all wheel drive. Right. Okay. Yep. The clutch does not release fully when the pedal <coughs> is pushed to the floor. Any of these could be the cause, except weak okay, pressure. Okay. You know the clutch disc is supposed to release when you push the pedal in, right? It's not doing it. Remember, this is an accept question. The clutch does not release fully when the pedal is pushed to the floor. Pilot bearing? <sighs> okay. Too much free pedal travel? It's 
No. We're looking for the one that won't do it. <coughs> this would do it, right? Let me see the uh, first part of the question again. The clutch does not release fluid when the pedal is pushed to the floor. Any of these could be the cause, except... We just had a question like this, uh, and the pressure, the, pressure plate plate, the pressure plate springs was on there, and that wasn't it, so I want to say it's that, because this is the accept question now. It's the one that would not cause the clutch not to fully release when you push the pedal in. Yeah, and the question was what releases. would cause it to release, and that was not, that was not it. It was uh, or something like that. Yeah, I want to say pressure plate springs. Context clues. Two. I say it's that or part of the brand. Mm -hmm. Finish. Those are like seven or eight questions. Go to six real quick. Two. Oh, you got shit. only two right? You can fix that with a little study. <laughs> yeah, what was six? Yeah. It's at the top. Yeah, you got an eight, no? Yeah, scroll down. You just pass it right there. Go keep going. A little more. Right there. Correct answers. Too much end shift. It doesn't tell you what you clicked and whatnot. Six is? Side gear clearance. Oh, oh six was side gear clearance. Okay. Yeah. Oh, damn. We only got two out of eight. This is mm -hmm. on that one, huh? We're family. We're on family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we did this one. I know that, right? Nope. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking a different one. Which one did we do? Not that one. Mm. I want to see that one. Oh uh, yeah, we did this one, right? Because this one had like 65 questions or something, right? Okay, refresh. This is probably one of the better ones. Yeah, we can re a refresher. We can go through these again if you want to. Yeah. Pretty sure we forgot. Pretty sure you forgot? You want to start at the beginning? It's a long weekend. Okay, everybody <coughs> knows what this one is, right? Yeah. 228, right? <coughs> After moving the brake drum, from a light truck to solid rear axle, you got brake shoes are wet with fluid. Doesn't say what kind of fluid, it could be what? Two different things, what could they be? Water. Brake fluid or axle, or your rear differential <laughs> fluid, right? This guy says a leaking wheel cylinder could be the cause, this guy says a leaking axle seal. Wheel cylinder would be your brake fluid, right? Axle seal would be the rear differential fluid. It could be either one, right? It just says a fluid. It doesn't say what it looks like, smells like, or tastes like. Okay. Technician A says to use a dial indicator to check for flywheel runout. B says to use a dial indicator to check for crankshaft and play. Runout, A? No, A is right. Do you, use, do you use a dial indicator for run out? Yes. Do you use it for end play? I think so. Of course you do. The, the part illustrated above contains uh, a seal wheel bearing, a hub, all a... All of all of yeah. A seal wheel bearing right here. Yeah. A hub right here. ABS tone ring right here for your wheel speed sensor. All right. A vehicle with a vacuum brake booster and a five speed manual transmission has a small drip of tan colored fluid on the driver's side floor board. Which of the following is the most likely causing this leak? A leaking brake master cylinder cup seals, a leaking clutch master cylinder secondary seal, a leaking brake vacuum booster check valve, a leaking clutch master cylinder primary seal. I see three masters. What is it? 
D. Is that what you said? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think. No, I, I remember. Which was? Wasn't it like um? It's either B or I can't remember which one is the seal that drips. Like um. First, uh, primary or second? Oh, second. Primary seal leaks internally. Secondary seal leaks externally. Okay. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Gotta click it. Okay. Click it again. A vehicle is clicking while making U turns. A says an outer CV joint could be the cause. B says if water and dirt have intruded past its rubber boot. It can be repaired by replacing the lubrication and protective boot with a CV boot replacement kit. I think B is wrong. I think you can't replace it or repair it. Not sure. What makes a clicking noise when you're turning? CV. Outer CV joint. Mm -hmm. Outer. Okay. Don't mess that up. If water and dirt have intruded past the boot, it is no good. You yeah. cannot repair it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the clutch pedal of a vehicle with a manual transmission feels firm and is binding. The clutch sticks and does not completely disengage. Which of the following is most likely causing this condition? The input shaft, the input shaft bearing, the clutch release bearing, or the vacuum booster? Well, you can eliminate this one right away, right? What's a vacuum booster have to do with the clutch pedal feeling hard and binding? Um, bearing? Is it a clutch Yeah. bearing rides along the tube or the shaft of the part. Front of the bearing retainer, lubricated from factory, provide a smooth surface, reduce friction, prevent binding, all that kind of stuff. A, <coughs> a six speed manual transmission with a hydraulic clutch is difficult to shift and creeps in gear. A says there may be air in the hydraulic fluid. B says excessive clutch pedal free travel can cause this condition. Difficult to shift, creeps in gear, meaning you got the clutch all the way to the floor and it's in gear and the vehicle is moving, not supposed to move. What's causing that? Right. Air in the right. system, if that air in the system is not going to completely disengage, right? Mm -hmm. If you have too much free play, you're not going to get enough travel to release it all the way, right? A vehicle with a five-speed manual transmission and a dual-mass flywheel rattles at startup. A says a broken spring in the flywheel could cause this rattle. B says resurfacing the flywheel and replacing the clutch will repair this condition. Both. Look at this as a common sense question. This guy says you have a broken frame. Spring in the flywheel would cause that rattle. Yeah. It could. Yes. Resurfacing the flywheel and replacing the clutch. How is that going to fix a broken frame? Whoa, okay. You can't resurface the flywheel and fix a broken frame. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, it's the wrong question. It's this one. Okay. Cannot fix it by resurfacing it. <clears throat> a constant mesh manual transmission is binding and difficult to rotate. A says the counter shaft gear assembly may have faulty needle bearings. B says this binding could be caused by worn tapered roller bearings. I remember something about those roller bearings. <clears throat> Is it both? Yeah, both. Okay, let's see if it is both. Okay. 
A manual transmission makes a grinding sound at the front of the transmission with the engine running and the clutch fully engaged. Which of the following is causing this noise? Faulty input shaft bearing, faulty output shaft bearing, faulty clutch release bearing, faulty pilot bearing. All right. So what you got to remember here is the engine's running and the clutch is fully engaged. That means you do not have your foot on the pedal. Mm -hmm. Grinding sound. All you got to do is look at front and you can automatically get rid of this as a possibility, right? Yeah. The output shaft is not in the front. So now you got a one in three choice of getting it right. What is a pilot? Okay. Engine running, clutch fully engaged. Mm. Right? Allows the clutch fully engaged. Shaft is spinning at engine speed. Which of the following are placed at the ends of the transmission shaft and require a slight preload? Sealed ball bearings, thrust bearings, tapered roller bearings, needle bearings. Let's see. see. Anytime you see preload, it's tapered roller bearing, right? A four-wheel drive vehicle makes a popping sound when accelerating from a stop. The sound only occurs in four see. wheel. <laughs> only occurs in four-wheel drive. What do you think? Stretch on for case chain. Yeah, yeah, I just remember that. A vehicle has an excessive vibration at highway speeds. A says to use a dial gauge to measure the drive shaft for runout. B says to use a dial gauge to test the drive shaft companion flank for runout. Again, they're just asking you if you can use a dial indicator to check runout. Oh. Well, of course you can, right? <coughs> The measurement taken in the illustration right above is right checking. Out. It's in the front, yeah. Backlash in the front. It's on the tooth, right? Run out is the backside. On your left foot. If it was run <coughs> out, it would be, well, it was on the Tooth contact compound is applied to the ring gear. The gear is then rotated for a rep. Rotated four revolutions on the drive side and four on the coast side. The tooth contact pattern shown above indicates something. It's closer to the top, the heel. It needs to be right in the middle or lower. Wait, what do we need to do? Backlash should be increased. Backlash should be increased? Mm -hmm. Where is that? Is that an option? Yeah. Where is it? See? See? No, I wasn't saying I was just pulling out. Oh, no, 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 I'm tweaking. It's the, it's the gear to the D. The depth, no? Go down, scroll up. Let me see, D. I just remember that. Oh, uh, so the pattern needs to be. Mm -hmm. like so this is what? The toe or the heel? The heel's at the top, right? Yeah. The toe's at the bottom. So. So it should be B. This probably has something to do with pinion depth, right? B. Mm -hmm. Too much or too little? Too little. Should be decreased? Yeah, should be lower. Increase. increase. Would increase be, make it lower or decrease it's make it's it lower? Because it's supposed to take over the, the whole surface. Yeah, Not yeah. the whole surface, but more towards the middle. It looks like it's barely tapping it. But I thought decrease was more towards like, you know, the. Nah, if you decrease this, you make it small, you gotta make it bigger. Oh, okay. Yeah. So decrease would make it closer to bottom. I was bottom mistaken. Here. I, I knew what it was, I knew what it was supposed to be, but I was mistaken on the wording. A five-speed manual transaxle is hard to shift, and didn't we do this? And gold-colored shavings 
are seen in the transmission fluid towards the end of the draining cycle, which of the following is causing this condition? Remember the, what we talked about, the gold color of shavings. What is it? Brass. B. And what is that? B. Rings. Okay. The viscous clutch in a all-wheel drive vehicle has repeated failure. <clears throat> which of the following is most likely causing this condition? Axle seal leak, overfilled fluid, worn universal joints, different size tires. Viscous clutch. Viscous clutch on an all-wheel drive vehicle repeatedly failing. A. A. Viscous clutch. Well, I forgot what viscous means. The viscous clutch is the part that connects the up front and rear of the uh, all-wheel drive vehicle. Remember, it's a sealed unit. Can't change the fluid. Can't do anything with it. It's not serviceable. What causes it to wear out all the time? It's being overworked because the car has different size tires on it. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> right? It's overworked and forced to compensate for different size tires. Mm. So if you were to get different size tires, you would have to change it? It would wear it out if it was an all-wheel drive vehicle. So you couldn't, like, change it so it wouldn't, like, you know, mm -hmm. not do it? So you just have to keep repairing it? You'd have to keep replacing it if you had different size tires on an uh, all-wheel drive vehicle. And when it says different tires, it means from the front to the back? Front to back. Okay, I'm just making sure. Diameter. Just making sure. The clutch on a manual transmission chatters when it's first engaged. All the following would cause this clutch chatter except contaminated disc friction material. It's an except. A worn pressure plate, chip gear teeth, a worn flywheel. All of the following. <coughs> chatters. It's an accept question. Which one will call yeah. the clutch to chatter when it's first engaged? Meaning when you're first starting to let the clutch out and the car is moving. Is it C? Yeah. C? Uh huh. Well, how, do you get, how do you know? He just knows. <laughs> no, the gear teeth has nothing to do with the clutch. Right? Oh, okay. <clears throat> a manual transmission has a growling sound that gets louder in second gear. A says the second gear has a chipped tooth. B says the synchronizer's blocking rings are rounded. Blocking rings are rounded. Has a growling sound. Teeth make growling sounds. I don't understand B. Synchronized blocking rings are rounded. They're supposed to be pointed, remember? I believe they're supposed to be pointed. You said A? Yep. Okay. Okay. The bushing in a transmission's, transmission's extension housing is worn on one side only. A says binding universal joints cause this type of wear. We talked about this one several times, right? B says this is caused by excessive output shaft end plate. Would end plate cause the bushing to wear on one side? No. 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 Why do you joint cause it to wear on one side? A chirping sound is heard from the transmission bell housing when the clutch pedal is depressed. Which of the following is most likely causing this noise? Synchronizer, assembly, clutch disc, input shaft bearing, release bearing chirping sound. Remember, clutch pedal all the way in, you get kind of a squeak or a chirp or something like that, it's going to be what? <laughs> bearing. Input bearing. Release bearing? Chirping. Well, I mean, yeah, you're releasing it, so, yeah. D? D? My clutch yeah, A, no, technician A says to use a feeler gauge to check the clearance between the shift fork and the synchronizer sleeve. B says a bent shift rail will cause hard shifting. B is 
shift fork and synchronizer sleeve. Yeah, why not? A feeler gauge, why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Okay, we'll go to 25 here. We'll do two more questions. We'll take a break and come back and do some more and we'll get going down the test. Okay. All right, so let's do, uh, let's do two more and then we'll take a short break here. Two technicians are discussing a clutch pressure plate. A says to replace the pressure plate if it's warped. B says the pressure plate can be easily disassembled, re repaired, and resurfaced. Well. There is no repair for a pressure plate. Yeah. You throw it away. Back when you buy a clutch kit, you get a brand new one. Okay? Technician A says the pressure plate is warped. It has to be replaced. Absolutely. Te technician A says to replace the ring gear without replacing the pinion gear as long as... And you know that's bullshit, <laughs> right? You cannot replace a ring gear or a pinion gear separately. They only come in a set. Okay. As long as it's within specifications, technician B says to check the ring gear run out with a dial micrometer. Is B right only? Is it a micrometer? Do you check run out with a micrometer? No. No. The indicator. indicator. So neither. So we're both <coughs> wrong, right? Hey, uh, real quick. Okay. Um, All right, we'll take a, take a break till uh, what, 10 o'clock. Come back at 10 o'clock, we'll do a few more. Um, for Honda, Jared isn't the contact anymore. It's Will. Jared got promoted.